Hello everyone this is part 10 of what if Naruto was Hashirama's heir, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the intro. Two figures trekked across the vast desert known as the Land of Wind as they approached the border. The two figures were donning cloaks with the trademark red clouds of the Akatsuki. These two were Deodara and Sasori. Above the two figures was an owl carrying a male with red hair. The male captured inside the owl was Suna's Kazekage, Gara. That boy would have killed you if not for my intervention, said Sasori as he and Deodara continued to walk. Flashback, earlier that day. Deodara crashed into the ground roughly with several burn marks and a few broken bones as Gara came to land several feet away in the clearing with him. Sand began to swirl around Deodara as Gara looked upon him with a stoic expression. This is the end for you, said Gara as the sand continued swirling around Deodara. Gara was the first to notice Deodara flying over his village on his clay bird. Gara spotted it easily since that type of bird Deodara created did not inhabit sooner. After a long aerial fight against the dangerous bomber, Gara managed to finally capture him with his sand. Before Gara could crush him though, Deodara detonated a bomb to escape the prison and was sent careening out of the village walls. Gara followed him to finish him off. Not good, said Deodara as the sand was beginning to cover his upper body. Deodara was running low on chakra. It didn't help Gara left him no ability to fend off the sand by covering the parts of his body he'd need to attempt an escape. Before the sand could reach his entire upper body, it was sent away by a shroud of iron sand. I told you not to make me wait, came the voice of Sasori standing next to what appeared to be a puppet version of Sunagakur's Sandime Kazekage third wind shadow. Then you almost die, forget going solo, we'll take him together. Deodara dug his hands into his pouch as the puppet of the Sandime floated beside Sasori ominously. Despite Gara's calm outward expression, on the inside, he knew that this was an unfavorable matchup. His hands were already full against Deodara. And now added to the mix was a puppet master utilizing a puppet of Suna's strongest cage that wielded the strongest Kekai Genkai of Suna. It just didn't bode well for the young Jinchuriki. Despite the circumstances, Gara still prepared to face off against the two s rank shinobis. Flashback end. Deodara merely chuckled as they continued to walk across the desert with the Kazekage in tow above them. Well, he is the cage of his village. Even though Suna is considered the weakest, a cage is a cage. Don't forget that he houses the Ichibi while fighting in the sand, him. I think me and my art did pretty well despite the circumstances, continued Deodara with a grin. How long until we get to the ceiling area? We're finally out of the sand. It shouldn't be too long. By sunrise, we should be there. Remember though, it'll take us at least three days to finish the ceiling. Let's hurry. I don't like making people wait. In Kanoa, the next morning, Sunid sat at her desk with Sakura behind her as they looked over the paperwork. Just as Sunid prepared to sign the final document, Shizun burst through the doors with a note in her hand. Sunid Sama, shouted Shizun frantically as she handed Sunid the note. Suna was invaded by the Akatsuki and Gara was captured. Gara was defeated first then was seen being abducted by Sasori of the Red Sands and Deodara from Awagaku, based off Kankuro's viewpoint. He went after the two but was defeated by Sasori and left poisoned, said Sunid with wide eyes. Sunid looked up with a thought. They must have struck after Naruto left as there is no way he'd let something like that happen while he was still there. We have to get a hold of him somehow. What about the toad that you used to talk to Jiraiya-sama? Asked Sakura as Sunid nodded her head. Sunid opened the drawer to her desk to pull out a scroll. After pulling out the scroll and opening it, she pulled out a vial of blood and dropped a few splotches across the seal on the scroll. Kuchio's no jutsu summoning technique. A puff of smoke later and a small red toad appeared on her desk. After writing a small note, Sunid gave the note to the toad. Give this to Naruto as quick as possible. Please hurry. The toad nodded his head before dispelling himself in a puff of smoke. Sunid then bit her nail as she remembered a part of the letter sent by Sunagaku. Sasori of the Red Sands. He's a poison specialist and if that's a, Suna may need a medic. A good medic to tend to Kankuro. So, Sakura, I'll have to send you to aid them, 
but I can't just send you alone, continued Sunid as she then looked to her window. Perfect timing. Of course. Nothing less. Though Naruto may already be here. That toad may not have been necessary as we can just catch him on his way back, said the ninja on the windowsill without even looking up from his little orange book. I heard everything so, Sakura will meet you at the gate in 10 minutes. Don't be late. With that, the silver-haired ninja disappeared in a puff of smoke. Sakura and Sunid sweet dropped. Coming from you Kakashi-sensei, said Sakura as Sunid shook her head. Sakura then disappeared in a swirl of cherry blossoms as she vanished to get her staff ready for the mission at hand. Three days later, Naruto and Yugito were speeding through the forest trying to get to where Sunagaku stated the Akatsuki members departed. They were nearly back to Kanoa when a small toad appeared before Naruto giving him the sad news of Gara getting captured. Naruto immediately made a reverse track back to Sunagaku which took him and Yugito three days to get back to. They were joined by Kakashi and Sakura but left ahead of those two since Sakura stayed to take care of Kankuro. They were nearing the place where Naruto could sense a huge chakra, which was probably where the Akatsuki members were when he felt two smaller chakra signatures approaching. Yugi-chan, said Naruto clad in his Anbu uniform without his mask on. They sent someone to stop us from saving Gara. Actually too and if it's who I think it is then we'll have some trouble. Be ready. Yugito was clad in an all-black outfit, complete with a face mask identical to Kakashi's own. Yugito pulled her mask down with her hand as she nodded her head. I'm ready. We can't let those in the Akatsuki take one of us Jinchuriki without a fight. Be careful, said Yugito, sneaking a kiss with Naruto before pulling her face mask back up. Naruto then took off faster with Yugito right behind him. About a minute later, they arrived in a clearing surrounded by trees to see two figures, both clad in Akatsuki cloaks. One had a pair of Sharingan eyes while the other had blue skin and an enormous, bandaged sword on his back. Uchiha Atachi and Hoshigaki kiss him. We meet again, said Naruto as he and Yugito stood across Atachi and kiss him. But something feels off, thought Naruto about the two Akatsuki members opposing him. It's been some time, Naruto-kun came the seemingly emotionless voice and disposition of Itachi. And it's a pleasure to meet you finally, Yugito-san. Yugito nodded back. Of course it is. Except for the fact that you're killing someone at the moment or that you're an organization hellbent on capturing the tailed beasts, one of which I happen to house, said Yugito back to Itachi as Kissam laughed slightly. Well enough of this talking. You're trying to get to your friend and we're here to stop you. Let's get to it, said Kissam as he lunged at the two Jinchurki with a swing of his sword. Naruto pulled out a tri-pronged kunai as he blocked the large sword. While Naruto and Kissam were locked in a battle of kunai versus sword, Yugito attempted to strike Kissam down from his blind side, only to be hindered by the sudden appearance of Itachi. Itachi and Yugito then engaged in a taijutsu battle as Itachi drifted Yugito away from Kissam and Naruto, leaving the two alone in the clearing. Seems that brat I met some three years ago in Tanzaku guy has grown up, said Kissam with a laugh and intrigued smirk. You're a lot stronger. Strong enough to match me. I'm impressed. Hey, maybe. But then again, you're a lot weaker than I remember, said Naruto, holding a critical eye as he held Kissam's blade away from him with his kunai. I'd say less than half of what you were three years ago. So, either you've gotten weaker or it's some kind of jutsu. Nonetheless. Naruto backpedaled slightly as he and Kissam clapped their hands together preparing a jutsu. Sutan, Bakusui show her water style, exploding water colliding wave, said Kissam as he spat out a massive amount of water, which immediately covered the area in powerful waves. The waves then rushed out toward Naruto, who performed his own jutsu to counter. Doton, Doru Yoheiki, earth style, earth style rampart thought Naruto before a giant rampart of earth began to rise beneath his feet, lifting him out of the wave's destructive force. Kissam and his waves crashed into the wall, stopping on impact as Kissam looked up to see Naruto holding the ram seal. Kissam was about to retreat in case of a jutsu, only to see three more walls of earth rise around him, boxing him in completely. Two wood clones morphed out of the original Naruto's body as he prepared his technique. Futon, Gama Yudin, Wind Release, Toad Oil Bullet thought Naruto as he spewed out a torrent of wind-enhanced oil thanks to a clone pressing a palm to his back. The high-speed oil hit Kissam directly with tremendous force as Naruto's other clone flung an explosive note into the mix. 
boom. An enormous explosion erupted from the ground as the corridor of earth exploded outward from the force of the oil mixing with the explosive note. Naruto and his clones landed on the ground as they checked for signs of Kissam in the rubble. Did we get him? Asked one of the clones not seeing a sign of Kissam left. Looks like it, replied Naruto's other clone. Not a second after saying that, Naruto looked to his right as he saw what appeared to be a giant, bandaged fin approaching him and his clones. Not yet, said Naruto as out of the ground, Kissam appeared holding his sword, unscathed from Naruto's recent attack. Mizu Bunshin Water Clone. Kissam laughed again. That was a nice combination. Too bad it'll take more than that to defeat me, said Kissam, placing his sword over his shoulder. I have no time to waste. I have to finish this now, thought Naruto before he reached into his pouch and pulled out his Gama mask. Naruto's clones dispelled as he placed on the mask and clapped his hands together. So you're using that, are you? Came the voice of Kurama in Naruto's head. Naruto internally nodded as red markings began to appear on his face, not that Kissam could see due to his mask. And I'm guessing you put the mask on to keep him from seeing it and possibly reporting back to his leader. TCH. Pretty smart, Ninjin. Though I'm sure that sword of his will sense the power up. Damn right it's smart. Plus, I've always wanted to test this jutsu on a real opponent and I can only use it without drawback in sage mode, replied Naruto, holding out a hand as he created a Rasengan in a flash. The ground around Naruto began to crumble as Naruto added earth manipulation to his jutsu. As far as the chakra increase, he'll probably think it's your chakra I'm using. Naruto's Rasengan began to give off a loud, power drill-like buzz as a swirl of brown began to morph around it. Naruto clutched his forearm with his other hand as the Rasengan turned a light brown color with a spiraling spear appearing around it, pointed directly at Kissam. The spear coated Naruto's arm up to his elbow as the tip of the spear was past his hand, which held the Rasengan. Samehada began to flail wildly as Kissam received the message loud and clear, even without Samehada's warning. I know, you could probably feel that massive spike in chakra from miles away. And I'm not stupid to not know that that jutsu is powerful, said Kissam before clapping his hands together. But then again, that thing is made of chakra and I have the perfect jutsu to use against it. Sutan, Da, Kissam was cut off by the immediate appearance of Naruto via Shunshin. Like teleportation. What speed? Senpo, Doton, Raisonuri, Sage Art, Earth Style, Spiraling Spear. Thought Naruto drilling the jutsu into Kissam's gut. As the spear hit Kissam, a massive shockwave occurred, tearing up the landscape around the two. Samehada attempted to absorb the jutsu but was blown away by the explosion of raw power from Naruto's jutsu. As Naruto's jutsu drilled into Kissam, the surrounding land also began to merge into the Raisiniri before exploding outward and sending Kissam flying, creating a deep, cone-like trench with his body at the head of it. Naruto let his arm go as he shook out the effects of using that jutsu. Hell yeah, that's even better than when I did it in Myobokuzen, said Naruto with a small smirk. I can't wait to tell Jiraiya-sensei about this one. Naruto then performed a series of shunshin to follow Kissam since he sent him flying to where Itachi and Yugito disappeared, earlier in the fight. Earlier, with Yugito. Well enough of this talking. You're going to get your friend and we're here to stop you. Let's get to it, said Kissam as he lunged at the two Jinchurki with a swing of his sword. Naruto pulled out a tri-pronged kunai as he blocked the large sword. While Naruto and Kissam were locked in a battle of kunai versus sword, Yugito attempted to strike Kissam down from his blind side, only to be hindered by the sudden appearance of Itachi. Yugito didn't stop however and began to throw a flurry of strikes at the stoic Uchiha. Itachi just continued to backpedal and dodge as he led Yugito out of the clearing, away from Kissam and Naruto. Having enough of trying to hit the Uchiha, Yugito flew through several hand seals at a rapid pace. Nezumi Kedama, mouse hairball, said Yugito as she fired off a massive blue fireball at Itachi. Dodge this, thought Yugito as the jutsu broke apart into dozens of smaller fireballs that honed in on the motionless Uchiha. Yugito was in for a surprise when the jutsu hit Itachi full force and sent him back in a blazing, blue fire into a tree. However, upon hitting the tree, Itachi dissolved into crows that began to take flight at Yugito. Wake up kitten. It's a genjutsu, came the voice of the nibi inside Yugito's head, forcing her jinchuriki partner out of a genjutsu placed on her. Upon being released, the crows that were coming toward her turned into fast-paced shuriken. 
Thanks, Nibby, replied Yugito to her partner as she extended her fingernails. With grace and agility, Yugito dodged the numerous shuriken and whichever ones she couldn't, she'd cut through with her sharp fingernails. Yugito sliced through the last shuriken as she then lunged to her right, flying into a nearby bush. Atachi came jumping out of the bush as Yugito mauled straight through it in hopes of getting him. Atachi landed on a nearby tree branch as he looked on at the female Jinchuriki. Yugito smirked as she looked up at Atachi. Is a member of the mighty Uchiha clan running? I thought that in a one-on-one -on -one fight you should always run from a member of your clan. I guess it's kind of true since one of us is running. Atachi's expression never changed. It's not a matter of me running away. My job was to just impede you and Naruto-kun. I'm not here to win by any means, said Atachi as he then put a hand to his mouth. Katen, go kaku no jutsu, fire style, grand fireball technique, thought Atachi firing an enormous fireball at Yugito. I didn't even see him weave the signs, thought Yugito placing her hands in the tiger seal to respond. Katen, end and fire style, flame bullet, said Yugito blowing out an equally as big fireball of blue fire. The two jutsus crashed into each other as they fought for dominance. Yugito noticeably began to dominate the Uchiha as her fire was pushing back into Atachi. Then Yugito saw something that shocked her. Another Atachi appeared, jumping from behind the first with a jutsu already prepared. His seal speed is unbelievable. To be able to create a fireball and shadow clone, how good is this guy? Katen, Hosenka no jutsu, fire style, Phoenix Sage fire technique thought the airborne Atachi as he sent out a dozen miniature fireballs at the still fire-breathing Yugito. Halfway to Yugito, her entire body became cloaked in a Jinchuriki cloak. Instead of the normal red, version 2 Jinchuriki cloak, Yugito was instead bathed in a majestic blue chakra cloak. Thanks to the white necklace given to her by Naruto, it helped Yugito tame the potent chakra of the Nibi and turn it into a true Jinchuriki cloak like Naruto's. An arm of chakra appeared from the chakra cloak and swatted away the fireballs with ease as Yugito immediately overpowered the first Atachi in the fireball battle and sent him blazing into a puff of smoke. He's good. That first Atachi was the actual clone. He was hiding out this whole time, thought Yugito still in her blue chakra cloak as her chakra arm receded into her cloak. You're right, kitten. With those eyes of his, he could counter your speed and not to mention the fact of how fast he is already. It's going to be tough but in your Jinchuriki cloak, it should be easy to get him now. Maybe you coo, replied the Nibi before she felt a massive spike of chakra. Kitten, do you feel that? Who couldn't feel that? Replied Yugito as the chakra was incredible. Is that Naruto-kun? I've never felt something so powerful. It's even stronger than Reikage sama Is that the QB? No kitten. There's not an ounce of Kurama's power in there. That's all him replied Nibi as Yugito stood in awe of the power spike. It reminds me of the Shodai Hokage. It seems Naruto-kun is finished playing around. He's certainly grown stronger, thought Itachi with a small, unseen smile as he could see a massive wave of earth heading toward him and Yugito. Yugito jumped out of the way while Itachi stayed situated on the tree he was in since he was out of the way. The wave of earth went flying past them and out of sight, but you could make out kiss him inside of it. That's an impressive jutsu. And it looks like he's arrived here now. Naruto appeared materializing next to Yugito in a shunshun, still with his mask on. Naruto and Yugito's hair was swaying due to the wind flowing through the area by Naruto's jutsu as they looked up at Itachi moving the hair out of his eyes. Naruto noticed something weird about Itachi though. Taking off his mask, Naruto looked toward the Kanoa Nuke Nin. That's a serious wind blowing through here right now, so how is your cloak not moving? Asked Naruto watching Itachi. Yugito then took notice of that fact as well. You know what, you're right. We were fighting and he was moving around a lot yet his cloak never moved. It's crazy now that you made me notice it, said Yugito before Naruto dispelled in a puff of smoke. Another Naruto appeared behind Itachi, stabbing a tri-pronged kunai into his back. Hey. I knew it wouldn't be that easy, said Naruto as Itachi detonated on him. The Itachi Naruto stab turned out to be yet another clone using the Bunshin Daibaku a clone great explosion to explode in Naruto's face. Instead of blood and body parts, that Naruto turned out to be a wood clone. Yugito was in awe of the quick sequences of events and the fast-paced actions of the two shinobi. Over there. 
to the left kitten, said the nibby in Yugito's head as she turned to see what her bayou was talking about. Upon turning, Yugito saw another Naruto with his mask on, hitting Itachi directly with a raising gun. A huge raising gun. Senpo, Odama raising gun, sage art, big ball raising gun, thought Naruto hitting Itachi directly, the real Itachi. Naruto sent out two clones ahead, both of them dropping sage mode to keep it hidden while he waited to strike Itachi. While in sage mode, Naruto could easily sense where the real Itachi Uchiha was and quickly dispose of him. After blasting Itachi away, Naruto could have sworn he saw a smile on the emotionless Uchiha's face. Itachi was blown away from Naruto and sent skidding back through the forest as Yugito landed beside the Kyubi Jinchuriki. Naruto looked at Yugito before nodding his head. Right as Naruto nodded his head, a huge explosion of dust, rocks, trees, and debris exploded into the air. Signs of Naruto's earlier raising gun into Kisum finally detonating in the distance. That thing just now exploded. Questioned Kurama in Naruto's head. It's on a scale near a Bayou Dharma tailed beast ball. I mean you can just say it. I impressed you. Go on, I'm waiting, replied Naruto in his head before hearing a scoff from his partner. Well, that's better than nothing. Now to pinpoint Gara again. Naruto closed his eyes behind his mask as he focused on his sensing ability. After a few seconds, Naruto found a wave of chakra being released that matched Shukaku's. Naruto opened his eyes to see Yugito still in awe over the raising gun that just exploded not too long ago. Yugi-chan. We have to hurry. I can barely feel Gara's chakra. Came the voice of Naruto, snapping Yugito out of her state of awe. Yugito looked toward Naruto and nodded as the two took off to where Naruto could feel Gara's chakra. Naruto and Yugito took off in a sprint as they headed to where Naruto could sense Gara weakening chakra. Please make it in time, thought Naruto as he continued to sprint at a rapid pace. Yugito was having a tough time keeping up with Naruto, even in her Jinchuriki cloak. Did he power up or something? How is he so fast and strong? I'll have to ask him later thought Yugito barely keeping up with the speed of Naruto. Eventually, though, Naruto and Yugito landed in a ravine, facing a huge boulder with a sealed tag on it that blocked the area holding Gara. That's a five-sealed barrier tag, right? Questioned Yugito as Naruto nodded his head at her flexing her knowledge of sealing. Well I mean I do have a seal master for a boyfriend and all. But anyway, the only way past this is by taking off the other four tags and this one at the same time, correct? That's one way of doing it. Or we could, said Naruto before leaping up to the boulder. Naruto reached into one of the ninja pouches on his back and pulled out a paintbrush and some ink. Dipping the brush a few times, Naruto brushed over the seal tag in front of him, placing a seal over it. Naruto looked at it for a second and being satisfied with his work, put his hand in a half-ram seal. Kai, release. Sealing is incredible. I see why the Uzumaki clan was brought to near extinction back during the Second Ninja War. It has so many uses, said Yugito watching the seal turn blank. Naruto placed a palm on the rock before he funneled some chakra into the boulder. Seconds later, the once boulder, broke apart into tinier rocks as they were blasted into the area containing only Deodara and Sasori. The former sitting atop a motionless Gara. Seems like you have finally arrived, said Deodara as he stood up from sitting atop Gara. But you're a little late, your friend here is dead. Yugito looked somber at that as even though she hadn't known Gara for long, he was still a person and even a Jinchuriki at that. Naruto's facial expression couldn't be seen behind the white porcelain of his Anbu mask, but if his face was viewable, Deodara and Sasori would be able to see angry, golden eyes beneath his mask. We have to get out of here. Leader Sama said that the Kyubi Jinchuriki should not be faced. And from what Atachi and Kisum just said about their encounter with him, it'd be wise to leave this place, thought Sasori as Deodara felt the same way. He didn't want any kind of interaction with the Kyubi Jinchuriki especially since he was sure that he was angry about Gara. Deodara pulled out a clay bird as he prepared to ditch the area. Before he could make his bird grow into its full size, Naruto appeared before him in a shunshun with a tri-pronged kunai in hand. Fast as Kisum said, thought Deodara as he and Sasori jumped away from Naruto. Naruto stood beside the body of Gara as he looked down at the fallen cage. Pricking his finger on his kunai, Naruto slammed a palm beside the motionless Gara. 
A small yellow toad appeared as it opened up its mouth and swallowed Gara whole before disappearing in a puff of smoke. While that was happening, Deodara and Sasori were already on Deodara's bird as they began to fly above Naruto and Yugito to escape. That plan was halted however at the appearance of a large, purple barrier. Shishinjin, four violet flames formation came the voice of four Naruto situated in a rectangle around the four shinobi. The original Naruto looked up at the two Akitsuki members while taking off his mask. The red markings around his eyes and on his forehead were in full display as he stared down the two. I'm going to fucking kill you, said Naruto, cracking the ground as he clapped his hands together. The ground rumbled violently as it quaked at Naruto's power. This is not good, thought Deodara as he and Sasori looked on at the sage Jinchuriki. Outside, hurry Sakura. We're almost there, said Kakashi as he, Sakura, and his dog summoned Pack and raced through the forest. Sakura finished healing Kankuro and the two were now headed to back up Naruto and Yugito. Hi sensei, said Sakura as she continued to jump behind the two in front of her. As they were jumping, they noticed a giant trench in the ground. It seems like Naruto isn't messing around. That's his chakra that created this, said Pakan. And he's about one more mile away. I can smell four others in the area as well. One being his girlfriend, Gara, and two others that I don't recognize. It must be the pair of Akitsuki members that you're smelling. We should move faster, said Kakashi as the group of three picked up their speed. I can't lose another person close to me. Please make it in time. Inside the cave. We have to get out of here now Sasori no Dana. That kid seems hellbent on killing us. We need to go, said Deodara in a panic as a majestic, orange chakra began to cover Naruto that looked eerily like the nine-tailed fox. No matter how you look at it, one of us will die today. There's no way we'd be able to get away from that boy, especially considering the Nibi is right there with him, said Sasori from inside his puppet. I will be the decoy. I'll have a better chance against those two than you would, my abilities would be able to work better. While I distract him, you find a way to dispel this barrier, all you have to do is take out one of the users and it should dissipate. You have to get this info back to Lida Sama about the Jinchuriki's power. Deodara stared at Sasori for a second before nodding his head at the plan. He was totally right and one of them needed to get the information on the QB back to their leader for his impending battle against him. Right after nodding his head, the ground under Naruto burst open as a massive wooden structure appeared beneath him. The two Akitsuki members stared in awe as a wooden version of the nine-tailed fox was created. Senpo, Mokuten, Kumiho, Sage Art, Wood Style, Nine-Tailed Fox, thought Naruto as the orange chakra of Kurama that was surrounding him molded into the wooden fox. Once it settled in, the fox's eyes glowed a vibrant orange as it roared out at the two members of Akitsuki. Yugito, still cloaked in her blue chakra, jumped on top of the wooden fox next to Naruto. Naruto-kun, don't you think this is a bit much? Questioned Yugito as Naruto never looked at her. His once golden eyes were now orange and slit, a combination of his golden, sage mode eyes and Kurama's own red, slit ones. Yugi-chan. They killed Gara. What did Gara ever do to deserve this? Questioned Naruto right back. As Naruto finished talking, the wooden fox opened its mouth like a gigantic raisin and formed in front of it. Naruto, if you continue this, you'll just kill yourself as it will bounce off the barrier and detonate in here with you, came the calm voice of Kurama as Naruto heard his partner's words. You'd have to release the barrier if you plan to use that jutsu. You're right. It will detonate in here. But Yugi-chan and I will be fine. As long as we're inside the wooden domain of the fox. It'll be able to withstand the power of it, came the reply of Naruto, surprising Kurama that even though he could feel Naruto's hectic emotions. I guess that Anbu training really does help. He's gotten a lot better at keeping calm. If this was him a few years ago, he'd attack blindly and be killed. These two aren't armed less Orokimaru and his goons. They'd beat him if he was just going off of blind rage, thought Kurama about Naruto. Naruto allowed the head of the fox to open, allowing Naruto and Yugito entrance as it closed them within its head. The raising gun eventually finished forming as the fox aimed. No matter where it sent it out, the ball would explode and take anything inside the barrier with it. Deodara, be ready, shouted Sasori as he had pulled out a scroll earlier that just dispelled, summoning 100 puppets in red cloaks around them. 
All the puppets then activated chakra shields and surrounded themselves Sasori and Deodara as Naruto's fox opened its mouth to release its jutsu. Senpo, Raisinho, Sage Art, Spiraling Cannon, said Naruto as his fox blasted a violent wave of energy. The barrier held firm like Naruto said it would as it expanded upward to allow the jutsu a small escape to keep the barrier from collapsing at its strength. Smoke billowed out everywhere as the inside of the cave was shrouded in it. Inside the smoke cloud, Naruto's wooden fox held firm to the jutsu as Naruto and Yugito came out of it unscathed once the jutsu began to die down. Yugi-chan. They are still alive. And one of them escaped, said Naruto as the smoke began to leave the cave. Naruto's clones dispelled themselves ending the barrier that surrounded them. Kakashi-sensei and Sakura-chan are outside. Go with one of them, preferably Kakashi since the poison user is in here and Sakura would be of help here against him. Please hurry and be safe. Yugito nodded her head as she began jumping out of the cave to get out and chase the escaping Deodara. That was the scene Kakashi and Sakura arrived at to see smoke coming out of the cave along with a man on a clay owl and Yugito cloaked in a blue cat shroud in hot pursuit. Yugito stopped for a second to acknowledge the two new arrivals. Kakashi-san, come with me. We're going to get him while Sakura-san goes in the cave to help Naruto with Sasori. Let's go, came the voice of Yugito as Kakashi and Sakura nodded their heads. Kakashi took off with Yugito as they pursued the fleeing Deodara while Sakura leaped into the cave to join Naruto. Inside the cave, that was an impressive jutsu kid. It was able to destroy my Akahigi, Hayaki no So and Red Secret Technique, performance of a hundred puppets. But I'm still here, came the voice of Sasori, who was now revealed due to his first puppet being destroyed by Naruto's jutsu. Sasori was a man of average height with brown eyes and shaggy red hair. The weird thing about Sasori was that he looked the same age as Naruto, if not slightly younger. That doesn't make sense. I heard that he was an important fighter for Suna during the Third Shinobi War. That's how he earned his name Sasori of the Red Sands. So how could he be my age? Thought Naruto before he saw a pink blur appear behind Sasori. Doesn't matter now. Sakura's got him. Okasho, Cherry Blossom Impact came the voice of Sakura as Pink Chakra swelled around her right fist. Sasori's eyes widen upon feeling the full force of Sakura's fist impacting against his back. Sasori's body split apart as it flew past Naruto, leaving him looking at Sakura. You okay, Naruto? He didn't get you with any of his weapons, did he? Kankuro had a mere scratch yet he was close to dying. His poison was like nothing I've ever seen said Sakura as Naruto shook his head no. Sakura then took notice of the red markings on his face. Naruto, is that sage? Sakura was cut from talking as Naruto performed a shunshun beside her before spewing out a massive amount of water. Senpo, Sutan, Kyodai Tsunami, Sage Art, Water Style, Giant Tsunami, thought Naruto as an immense wave of water rushed out at Sasori, who was somehow back intact after being split apart by Sakura's punch. Sasori upon standing fired out two streams of fire from his palms at Naruto and Sakura. Naruto felt him activating it and in turn, used his own jutsu that easily trounced the streams of fire from Sasori while sending him washing away with the powerful wave of water. We need to hurry. Even though I'm sure Yugi-chan and Sensei can handle the other guy, I'd rather know for sure, said Naruto standing atop the water. I agree Naruto, but we need to find his weak spot. There's no way anyone, even you, would be able to take a direct hit from my punch and still be able to move, said Sakura as she and Naruto stared down the emotionless Sasori. It's clear that he's just a puppet but there has to be something powering him. You're right Sakura-chan. I think I already know what it is though, said Naruto before whispering something in Sakura's ear. A nod from Sakura later, and the two Jonin of the Leaf took fighting stances as they prepared to face off against Sasori once more. It's time for me to show you the strongest Kekai Genkai in all of Suna. Satatsu Iron Sand, said Sasori before pulling one of the scrolls off his back. The scroll disappeared in a puff of smoke as a puppet took its place. This puppet is the strongest Kazekage in history, the Sandime Kazekage. Well that makes it interesting, said Naruto as a trail of sand seeped from the mouth of the puppet. The sand then began to form a line in front of the Kazekage before protruding with ball-like structures. Satatsu Shiga Iron Sand Drizzle, said Sasori as dozens of balls of iron sand rocketed towards Sakura and Naruto. Sakura never moved as Naruto slammed a palm on the ground. 
a gigantic hand emerged from the ground, big enough to protect Sakura and Naruto from the iron sand attack. Mokuten, Hote no Jutsu would style, laughing Buddha Jutsu thought Naruto as several more gigantic hands appeared out of the ground around Sasori and aimed to smash him into the ground. Sasori wasn't having that as he prepared another of the Kazekage's Jutsu. The iron sand compressed itself into a large sword that the puppet cage used to slice the hands before they could reach him. Satatsu Keshu iron sand gathering assault said Sasori as the hands thudded on the ground. The hand that protected Naruto and Sakura in the first place, fell back to the ground revealing only Sakura, who had her arms in an X. Sakura dropped her hands as her skin turned a bright red. Hachiman Tonku, Simon Kai 8 Gates, Gate of Life released said Sakura as her eyes gave off a pink glow. Sakura then disappeared in a feat of speed as she approached Sasori. Sakura was certainly no pushover nowadays, she trained hard during her time under Sunid and even got some help from Rock Lee and Guy Sensei. After a long time training with the two, Sakura now had access to the eight inner gates. She couldn't go higher than three gates at the moment but to get to three gates is still better than what most could ever hope to accomplish. Not to mention the fact that her speed and strength are amplified due to the gate's influence. And Sasori certainly wasn't expecting the change but defended against it accordingly. Seitsu Kaiho Iron Sand World Method said Sasori as the iron sand began to branch out rapidly around him, creating a web of iron sand that made it difficult to navigate through. The web nearly caught Sakura before she stopped to avoid the deadly sharp branches. Sakura could also see traces of poisons in the sand meaning that one nick would be enough to kill. Since Sakura was caught, Sasori decided to finish her off while he had the chance. Now die, shouted Sasori uncharacteristically as the iron sand prepared to branch out again to skewer Sakura. Before it could though, Sasori felt a sharp pain run through his chest. The sand immediately fell to the ground as blood leaked from Sasori's chest. Sasori looked down to see a tri-pronged kunai sticking through his chest. Sasori turned his head around to see Naruto standing behind him with a kunai buried right into his heart, his only weakness. How did you move so fast? You were nowhere near me, said Sasori since he knew Naruto was behind Sakura on the wall and there should have been no way that he could move that fast without him realizing it. That was just a clone. I was underground, said Naruto who used Doton, Mororigaku no Jutsu Earth style, hiding like a mole technique to sneak behind Sasori. Naruto channeled Wind Chakra through his kunai before ripping it through the side of Sasori's body, killing him instantly. Naruto looked down at the puppet that once was Sasori before he pulled out a sealing scroll. After sealing Sasori's and the third Kazekage's bodies away in the scroll, Naruto nodded to Sakura as they took off to catch up to Yugito and Kakashi, who had gone to pursue Deodara. After a long run, Naruto and Sakura eventually caught Kakashi and Yugito standing around an explosion. What happened? Questioned Naruto looking at Yugito and Kakashi for confirmation. We were pursuing him and he just, exploded, said Kakashi. He just committed suicide. After I said that we'd capture him and get info out of him, he just stopped running away and blew himself up. Wow, I guess members of the Akatsuki are committed, said Sakura as Yugito walked over and placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Are you okay? Asked Yugito as the markings on Naruto's face vanished at the news of the other member killing himself. It took Naruto a moment but he looked at Yugito. Yeah, I'm fine. I just wish we could have gotten to Gara in time to save him, said Naruto before feeling someone approaching the group. Naruto hadn't even noticed the person due to his attempt of getting to Yugito and Kakashi. We still can, came the voice of an elder lady. Do you still have his body? Asked the lady as Naruto nodded his head. Who are you though? Questioned Naruto not knowing who this lady was. That's Chiyo Sama, an elder from Sunagaku, said Sakura immediately recognizing the medic and poison specialist of Suna. Naruto nodded his head before biting his thumb and summoning the toad from earlier. The toad released Gara from its mouth as it dispelled itself leaving the body of Gara on the ground before the group of shinobi. Chiyo looked at Gara before taking in a deep breath and kneeling beside him. Chiyo placed both her hands on Gara's chest as a blue chakra coated her hands and Gara's chest. What are you doing? Questioned Naruto even though he could feel what was occurring. Gara's chakra was beginning to come back. Are you restoring his life? This is a kinjutsu that only I know these days. 
it's called Kasho Tensei, one's own life reincarnation, said Chio as she continued to pour her technique into Gara in hopes of bringing the young cage back to life. Naruto looked ready to say something but Chio stopped him, I know what I'm doing and I understand the consequences of my actions. But I've lived a long life and I feel my time was about up anyway. But Suna needs Gara, And I'm sure with Gara leading Suna, we'll be able to become a much better village because of it. Especially with a friend like you. Naruto nodded his head with a smile at Chio's words as he could understand. He'd probably do the same if he was in her position. The next day, Naruto stood outside the village of Suna's walls with Yugito, Kakashi, and Sakura as they stood in front of Gara and his Suna contingent of Temari, Kankuro, and a few others. They were all saying the goodbyes after attending Chio's funeral. Gara made a full recovery after Chio's jutsu, which cost her her life in exchange for Gara's own. Even though Gara was alive again, he still lost Shukaku to the Akatsuki and was now no longer a Jinchuriki. Finishing off the goodbye, Naruto and Gara shook hands as the surrounding shinobi smiled at the interaction. I'll see you around Gara, said Naruto as Gara nodded his head before the group of four proceeded to walk away from Suna. Unknown area. Thank you, Deodara, said the spectral image of the Akatsuki's leader. Deodara's actual body was standing across from the image as he just relayed his encounter with the powerful Jinchuriki. You are dismissed. After saying that, the image of the leader dissipated, leaving Deodara alone. The actual body of the image in front of Deodara opened his eyes as he looked to his right. It seems that the Jinchuriki has grown incredibly stronger, said the leader. So it seems, came the voice of a man in the shadows. It would seem that even a god may not be able to stop him. No matter how strong the Jinchuriki becomes, he will never beat pain, came the voice of a blue-haired lady donning the Akatsuki cloak. You may be right, but what if I could help you? Questioned the voice from the shadows as it piqued Pain's interests. What could you mean? Questioned Pain. In due time. In due time, said the voice from the shadows as the shadowed figure vanished. Naruto. Naruto. We need to go. Tsunid-sama is calling for us. Came the voice of Naruto's pink-haired teammate, Sakura. Sakura was given a summons for a mission that Naruto was to be the leader of, yet he was busy messing around in training ground 22. Messing around with a kid in a spa. One moment, Sakura-chan. I want to see what he can do, said Naruto as he blocked a punch with his palm. The person punching Naruto smiled at him as he dispelled in a puff of smoke to reveal the same person, a spiky, brown-haired 13-year-old, standing several feet away. Cage Bunshin, Shadow Clone. When did you finally learn that? A while ago, about a year to be exact, said the ninja as he ran through four hand seals ending with the tiger seal. And I also learned this. Katen, Haze Kasho, fire style, ash pile burning. The brown-haired kid spewed out an enormous cloud of ash that immediately consumed Naruto. Once it surrounded Naruto, the ninja clicked a piece of flint on his teeth to ignite the entire ash cloud in a fiery explosion. Yes, I got him. Shouted the young ninja as he moved the scarf he was wearing away from his chunin vest. The young teen was wearing the standard outfit of Kanoa, except with black instead of blue just like his hero, idol, and rival, Naruto. He also added a red scarf with the kanji for monkey written down the length of it. This was none other than Sarutobi Konohamaru, recently promoted Chunin of the Leaf. Konohamaru had grown up well. Due to his private tutoring with Ebisu with his two teammates Mogi and Udon, Konohamaru became a genin at the age of 12 and one year later, won the Chunin exams in Kumo. This granted him a promotion to Chunin for his skills. Like all members of the Sarutobi clan, Konohamaru was skilled in fire manipulation and taijutsu. And of course, just like his grandfather, he was a budding bojutsu staff technique user. Hey, as if. I knew that wouldn't be enough to get you, said Konohamaru before biting his thumb and slamming it on the ground. Kuchio's no jutsu summoning technique. A puff of smoke later and a monkey as tall as the 5 foot 7 Konohamaru appeared. Konohamaru. What's up, man? Need something. Came the surprisingly deep voice of what appeared to be a teenage ape. Hey, Yomna. Can you transform for me? I need to kick my rival's ass. Said Konohamaru as his summon nodded his head. Henge transform. Yomna puffed into a large staff with a red shaft and gold tips. Konohamaru snagged the adamantine staff right before slamming it down into the ground. A few seconds later, Naruto came flying out of the ground a few feet away, 
barely avoiding the end of the staff as it elongated and flew past his head. Naruto smiled slightly as he landed on the ground and Konohamaru retracted his staff back to its normal size. What do you think Naruto senpai? Pretty good. Questioned Konohamaru with a smirk as Naruto nodded his head. You're getting there, I'll have to ask Bar-chan but you do seem like your Anbu material. However, still not good enough to beat me, said Naruto as he placed his hands in the snake seal. Mokuten, Mokusatsu Shibari no Jutsu, wood style, smothering binding technique, thought Naruto as a branch flew out of his palm directly at Konohamaru before diverging into a web of branches. Oh shit, said Konohamaru as he smashed the first couple of branches with his staff but couldn't stop all of them. Eventually, Konohamaru was left tightly snagged in the branches as his staff dispelled itself in a puff of smoke. No, so close. I'll find a way to get past your Mokuten. Just you wait boss. Boss. Konohamaru looked around to realize that he was all alone in the clearing. Boss. You got to let me down. I can't get out of this thing, cried Konohamaru as he struggled to get out of the branches. Hokage's Tower. Tenchi Bridge questioned Naruto as he finished reading the mission scroll given to him by Sunid. Orokimaru will be there, along with Sasuke probably. At the name Sasuke, Naruto noticed Sakura's body gave an involuntary twitch. At least she didn't get somber about it anymore, or maybe she already sort of knew what was going on. Did Bar-chan already tell her? I mean she's pretty high up being an assistant of the Hokage. Maybe she already knows, thought Naruto before focusing back on what Sunid had to say about the mission at hand. Yes, Naruto. We received intel that Sasori was supposed to meet up with a spy of Orokimaru's but that was actually a way for Orokimaru to take out the dead Sunid Nuke Nin, said Sunid. That's why I was sending you. Since you were the one to meet Sasori and actually hear him speak and see what he looked like, you can transform into him so you can take out his spy and Orokimaru. While also trying to find out a lead on Sasuke. What happens if we find Sasuke-kun, Sunid Shishu? Questioned Sakura as Sunid shifted her brown eyes to her pink-haired student. Well, Sasuke is considered an A-rank nuke nin, unofficially. So you will handle it like any other A-rank nuke nin, capture him if possible. But if not, put him down. Bring him back, either dead or alive, said Sunid with a stern voice as Sakura's face never changed. That's good Sakura. Glad you're not too depressed about it still. Great, well, if that's that, then you two are good to go. I would send some more people but I feel like you two will be enough for what could happen and if necessary, you can always flee faster with just two people. Make haste as we only have two days left before our window of opportunity is up, and one more thing, be careful, said Sunid as Naruto nodded his head. Sakura disappeared in a cherry blossom swirl and Naruto was about to follow before deciding to make a request. Actually Bar-chan. Konohamaru has hopes of joining Anbu. Maybe I could take him along with me on this mission despite you only wanting two people to go. I've gone against him, he seems like he could handle himself in a fight and that he knows what to do and how to do it. But I'd like to see him on a real mission before I give him my recommendation. Is that fine? Asked Naruto as soon as thought over it for a second. Him, his performance in the last Chunin exams was pretty good. Hell, he even won. Why not let the kid go along, but be sure to not let him hold you back. I'd like to see that this mission gets completed, said Sunid as Naruto nodded his head again before vanishing in a flicker of movement. Training Ground 22. How the hell am I supposed to get out of here? Shouted Konohamaru loudly as he was still stuck in Naruto's jutsu. Right as Konohamaru was prepared to give up, he heard two footsteps land behind him, followed by a palm being placed onto the ground. The wooden branches tangled snugly around Konohamaru receded into the ground as Konohamaru was released and landed on his feet. Hey, Konohamaru. I want you to go on a mission with me. You okay with that? Questioned Naruto as Konohamaru turned around abruptly with a big grin. Of course I am boss. This would be our first mission together. Shouted Konohamaru with enthusiasm at the prospect of going on a mission with Naruto. What are we doing? I'll brief you at the north gate in 30 minutes. Don't be late, said Naruto before disappearing in a simple flicker. Konohamaru stared dumbfounded at the speed of Naruto. That shunshun was so fast. It's like he was never there, said Konohamaru before placing a hand in a half ram seal. I need to get mine that fast. Konohamaru then disappeared in a swirl of leaves as he headed off to get ready for the mission at hand. 
Two days later, Tenchi Bridge. Just so you remember. This is an A-rank mission, said Naruto to his teammates after landing in a clearing near the Tenchi Bridge. Our mission parameters are to ambush Orokimaru when he attempts to ambush, Sasori. If possible, we are to capture him and if not, we will kill the target. The same goes for his spy. Naruto's teammates nodded their heads at the mission, though Konohamaru's hands were trembling slightly. Orokimaru. He killed Gigi. I could care less about capturing him. If I see him, I'll finish him off no matter wh. Konohamaru. Came the voice of Naruto, stopping Konohamaru from his thoughts. I know how you feel. Gigi was precious to me as well. But if you let your emotions take control, then you will surely fail. Emotions are only helpful if they are controlled and concentrated. It's the same concept as a raising gun. If you don't maintain the sphere correctly, the power will disperse over a wider area, significantly weakening the jutsu. But if you contain it, that's when you're able to do some damage. Konohamaru looked at Naruto with stars in his eyes as Sakura scoffed. What kind of lesson was that? It made sense but he definitely could have found a better example. Or at least said it better, thought Sakura. Naruto then placed his hands in the snake seal. Mokuten Henge wood element transformation thought Naruto as the ground underneath him burst open with branches that surrounded him along with a smoke cloud. Once the smoke cloud died down, it revealed Naruto transformed perfectly into a copy of Sasori's puppet. How do I look? Came the gravelly voice of the disguised Naruto as he attempted to imitate Sasori's voice. Sakura mulled over it for a second before nodding her head. How the hell are we supposed to know? You were the only one of us who saw him like that, said Sakura with a tick mark as Konohamaru laughed slightly. Naruto laughed sheepishly. Right, right. Anyway, I will go out and meet this spy. After getting information out of him, I will attempt to capture him. Unless Orokimaru appears before I get the chance to. In that instance, I may or may not signal you two to come out and help. Even though I'm sure I could take Orokimaru, I'm not sure how powerful his subordinate could be. So be ready on my signal and only on my signal. Got it, Konohamaru. Hi boss. I won't let you down, said Konohamaru as Naruto nodded his head. Alrighty then. It's time, disperse, said Naruto as the three shinobi of the leaf jumped to the different spots. Konohamaru and Sakura landed together in the forest overlooking the bridge while Naruto landed on a trail headed toward the bridge. Once he landed, he began to move toward the meeting place that was situated in the center of the Tenchi Bridge. With this strong breeze going right now. We should be able to move closer and still avoid detection, said Sakura before moving closer to get a better view of the bridge. This should do. Konohamaru followed her as he looked out to see a cloaked figure approaching Naruto on the bridge. There goes the spy. I hope this goes well and we get to see Orokimaru. I can't wait to get a crack him, said Konohamaru clenching his fist as Naruto made contact with the spy. On the bridge. It's good to see you again, Sasori-sama, said the spy before removing his hood to reveal ash-gray hair and round glasses. That combination was only prevalent on one known associate of Orokimaru's. Yakushi Kabuto. Oh, this is better than just getting Orokimaru. Thought Naruto before responding to, his spy. Kabuto, were you followed? Questioned, Sasori, as Kabuto looked behind him for a second. Kabuto turned back around to face him before answering. No, we're fine. How are you holding up? Kabuto exhaled a breath before pushing his glasses back. I still feel a bit shaken from when your technique was released, and I remembered who I really was. My mind is a bit clouded, as well, said Kabuto. I have questions for you. Tell me about his hideouts, and of that Uchiha boy. Kabuto nodded his head as he relayed all the information he had on those two subjects. Back in the forest. Kabuto's the spy, said a shocked Sakura at the revelation of Kabuto being the spy. I mean, out of all the people, Kabuto would be the last person I'd expect. Especially considering he's Orokimaru's right-hand man. Man, that Sasori guy who planted Kabuto must be amazing to get a spy that close to him. Orokimaru is no pushover and I wouldn't think that if he'd be able to get duped like that. But since the spy is here, we should be starting soon, said Konohamaru, who was decked out in Anbu gear. In his hand, was a white porcelain mask with red paint covering it that depicted a monkey's face. As Konohamaru placed the mask on, Sakura let out a small smile. Trying to join Anbu, huh? Questioned Sakura as Konohamaru nodded his head. 
I remember when both of my teammates did the same. You're not just doing this because Naruto did it, are you? Konohamaru shook his head as he turned to face Sakura. No, but I guess in a way my decision is influenced by boss. I plan to join Anbu, get really good and once boss becomes the Hokage, he'll make me his right-hand man, Anbu commander. This means that eventually, I'll become Hokage once he gives up the hat to me. What makes you so sure that Naruto's going to become Hokage? I mean it's not set in stone, maybe he wo, started Sakura before realizing what she was saying and seeing Konohamaru's porcelain mask stare. Never mind. Of course, he'll be Hokage. Whenever Shushu decides. I don't know what I was saying, finished Sakura as she noticed movement on the bridge. Boss. Shouted Konohamaru, preparing to jump into action at any time once the signal was given. On the bridge. If you hadn't pulled out the kunai Sasori-sama, I wouldn't have been able to dodge in time. Came the voice of Kabuto, standing next to, Sasori, as they opposed a fearsome foe. Just the man I was looking for. Guess we can have a little bit of fun before I call over Sakura and Konohamaru. Thought Naruto before he prepared to attack the Sanan before him. Kukukuku, Sasori. That outfit reminds me of the old days came the sinister voice of Orokimaru as he stared down at his former partner. Hope you don't mind if I intrude on this interesting conversation. Orokimaru, I see you've followed Kabuto, said, Sasori, next to Kabuto as Orokimaru laughed once again. Good eye, Captain Obvious. No need to be rude, I just thought I'd come and thank you, old friend. That is all, said Orokimaru as Kabuto's hand glowed a bright blue color. Kabuto then raised his hand before bringing it down quickly into the body of Sasori. Him, seems he was in on it all along, thought Naruto, leaping out of the destroyed wooden puppet with a cut on his right shoulder. Orokimaru then immediately went on the offensive at the airborne enemy. Senajushu, hidden shadow snake hands, said Orokimaru before thrusting his arm forward. Out of his sleeve, several snakes came out of it at a blistering pace set directly at Naruto. The snakes wrapped themselves around Naruto before biting at him, though once the first bite occurred, Naruto turned into a wooden replica of himself. It seems trouble has appeared, said Orokimaru as the wooden Naruto landed on the ground, and the real Naruto came up from the bridge floor. I didn't expect to see you here, Naruto-kun. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't expecting you here, Orokimaru. And it's so good to see you again, Kabuto, said Naruto, who was wearing his own Anbu outfit son's mask. Though I did expect this ambush to be a little better. I mean really, having just Kabuto attempt to slice open Sasori, followed by that weak snake Jutsu. I give it a C- at best. Kabuto pushed his glasses up with a smirk as he looked at Naruto. I'm impressed Naruto-kun. For you to be here, especially disguised as Sasori would mean that you've met Sasori and somehow got him to tell you about this meeting as he and I were the only two who knew of it but Sasori isn't the type of man to divulge that type of information regularly, so that would mean you either bested him in battle and he told you, or maybe someone in our own organization told Kanoa. But the latter should be impossible as only myself and Orokimaru knew of this meeting, deduced Kabuto acutely as Naruto shrugged. Orokimaru then grinned as he took notice of something. Why don't you bring out those other two pests that are hiding, said Orokimaru with a smug grin. Naruto looked for a second before pointing his finger in a gun-like fashion at Orokimaru. Not a second later, Sakura and the Saru monkey masked Konohamaru came lunging out of the woods and directly on the bridge between the two opposing parties. Sakura-chan, do you mind handling Kabuto? I'm sure Saru would like to join me in facing Orokimaru, said Naruto, to which Sakura nodded her head with ease. Of course. I heard about Kabuto's encounter with Sunid sama those years back and he thinks that fluke of a victory is worth something, said Sakura cracking her knuckles, reminiscent of Sunid. I guess I need to show him that slugs are better than snakes. Kabuto's hands glowed a bright blue as his smirk never left. What makes you think I'd let that plan work? As if I'd let that plan go through without a fight. You'll have to forcefully remove me from Orokimaru Sid, started Kabuto before he felt a presence appear between him and Orokimaru. The familiar swirl sound of a raising gun sounded off before it planted itself neatly into Kabuto's back, sending him flying past Konohamaru and Sakura into the woods. Naruto then turned to face Orokimaru as Saru landed beside him. Let's do this shall we, said Naruto as Orokimaru grinned and took off into the opposite side of the woods. Saru took off immediately after him as Naruto followed behind the Sanan and teenage Anbu. 
As this was happening, Sakura stood stock on the bridge alone. Well I guess I'll go see if Kabuto is still alive, said Sakura as she walked back into the forest to find Kabuto, who was surely hurt by the Raisingan from earlier. With Naruto and Saru. Who is this kid? Thought Orokimaru as he dodged a flurry of punches and kicks from the young Anbu with practiced ease. Brown hair is common in the leaf village but this fighting style. It kinda reminds me of Sensei and that Asuma kid. Is this boy Sensei's grandson? Orokimaru continued to dodge the punches with snake-like agility before lashing out with a kick of his own. As the kick connected, the Anbu disappeared in a puff of smoke. Cage Bunshin, Shadow Clone. This kid is good, thought Orokimaru as he felt a presence appear behind him. Saru landed on the branch of a tree behind Orokimaru as he ran through seven hand seals. Ram, horse, snake, dragon, rat, ox, tiger, thought Saru as he flew through the seals for his technique. Katen, Karu Endon, fire style, fire dragon bullet. Three steams of fire flew from Saru's mouth, one directly at Orokimaru and the other two at a 45 degree angle toward Orokimaru. The head of the fire streams turned into large dragon heads as they converged on Orokimaru. All three fire dragons converged on Orokimaru at the same time as he was sent careening toward the forest floor. One thing about Saru's jutsu was the heads of the dragons each held an explosive note. A powerful explosive note and once Orokimaru hit the forest floor, they detonated in an enormous explosion that leveled a massive chunk of the surrounding area in a large dome of fire. Naruto landed beside Saru before whistling at the display. That was pretty nice, said Naruto patting Saru on the back. Though next time you should really take notice of when you're battling a clone. The fire died down as Orokimaru rose from the soot-covered ground, unharmed from Saru's previous jutsu. Kukukuku. Seems Kanoa has another promising ninja in its ranks. A Sarutobi it would seem, said Orokimaru in a calm voice, displaying no fear in the face of Naruto and the impressive but non-worrisome Anbu beside him. Though if that's your best, you'd never be able to kill me. Let alone get Sasuke-kun back. Whoever said we wanted Sasuke back. We're just here to capture or kill you and Kabuto, that was the mission. Finding Sasuke would be just a bonus, said Naruto as he landed in the destroyed area in front of Orokimaru. Saru landed next to Naruto as Orokimaru laughed again at Naruto's statement. Kill me. I'd like to see you try Naruto-kun, said Orokimaru mockingly before laying flat on the ground and opening his mouth sickeningly wide for his next jutsu. Mandara no Jin formation of 10,000 snakes, said Orokimaru as hundreds, thousands of snakes poured from his mouth at an alarmingly fast rate at the two Kanoa Nin. Halfway to the two, blades began to protrude from the mouths of the snakes as they pointed them directly at Naruto and Saru. What an impressive amount of snakes, thought Naruto before slamming a palm onto the ground. Mokuten Kuchios, Hori Nikushoku Butsu would release summoning, burrowing carnivorous Buddha. The ground rumbled in front of Naruto as the snakes approached. Right before reaching him though, the ground opened up to reveal an enormous plant that took the shape of a Venus flytrap with four sides, which proceeded to gobble down the approaching snakes with one bite. Though it managed to eat all the snakes, the swords that came out of the mouths of the snakes were poisonous and as such, the plant creature began to feel the effects of the poison immediately, prompting it to dispel a few seconds later. Why not just blow him away and be done with it Naruto? came the voice of Naruto's partner, Kurama. I grow bored of seeing this snake. Yo Kurama, I feel you on that. How do you think I should do it? Questioned Naruto back to his partner before feeling Kurama's chakra flood his system. Of course you want me to just blast him away with pure power. Well if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. A vibrant orange chakra shroud surrounded Naruto as four tails appeared swaying behind him. Stand back Saru, I don't want you to get caught in the crosshairs of this, said Naruto before going back to his internal partner. You want to do this? Don't mind if I do, said the now Kurama-controlled Naruto, whose eyes were now red and slit due to Kurama's control over his body. Kurama placed his hands in the tiger's seal. Katen, Kitsune Bimu, fire style, fox beam. Orokimaru noticed the chakra build up from Naruto and decided to act accordingly. After biting both of his thumbs, Orokimaru slammed them both onto the ground. Kuchios, Sanju Rashomon, summoning, Triple Rashomon, said Orokimaru as three large demonic gates rose from the ground in front of him. A second after rising, the gate was struck by the powerful beam from Naruto. 
Once the beam hit the gate, it expanded to carve a massive hole through it. After going through the first gate, the beam continued to go through the rest of the gates before exploding once past the last gate. The explosion blew the last gate out of the ground as the area behind it was shrouded in a huge explosion of energy. Once the explosion died down, Naruto regained control of his body as he looked at the blast zone. The bottom half of Orochimaru's body was stuck protruding out of the ground comically as the top half of his body was gone. Why do I feel he's not done? Questioned Naruto. Naruto was proven correct when a sword came flying out of the ground at him from the mouth of Orochimaru's head that followed it. Luckily Naruto was fast enough to sidestep the blade before holding a palm directly in front of Orochimaru's approaching head. A Rasengan appeared in Naruto's hand in a split second as Orochimaru crashed directly into it, blasting his head clean off. Naruto and Saru waited for a few seconds as they realized that Orochimaru hadn't moved yet. A minute later, Saru took off his mask to reveal his young Saru Tobi face. I guess he's done. That's the end of Orochimaru, said Konohamaru as Naruto nodded his head. Let's go check on Sakura. While Konohamaru took off, Naruto stood staring for a few more seconds before eventually deciding to follow Konohamaru back. Once Konohamaru and Naruto were gone, the bottom half of Orochimaru ripped open to reveal another Orochimaru. Kukukuku. Seems that boy has gotten powerful. But once I absorb Sasuke-kun, no one will be able to stand up to me, said Orochimaru as he turned to leave. Sorry Kabuto, but I guess your services are no longer necessary. Maybe if you're still alive, I'll come and get you. If not, Orochimaru then disappeared in a shunshun as he left the area. The next day, we may not have gotten Orochimaru, said Naruto, walking beside Konohamaru and Sakura. Naruto then looked at the tied up and sedated Kabuto on top of the slug Sakura summoned. But at least we got the next best thing. And we killed Orochimaru too. Don't forget that, said Konohamaru as Naruto nodded his head. Konohamaru went to pat Naruto on the back but Naruto dodged it. What's wrong, boss? You all right? I'm fine Konohamaru. Don't even worry about it, said Naruto before Sakura realized something weird about the Naruto before her. Naruto, said Sakura in a sweet tone. You wouldn't happen to be a clone. A clone that's taking the place of the original just so he can go to Kumogaku to see Yugito Ayu. Naruto put up placating hands before blowing out a sigh. Do you want the truth or a lee? Started Naruto before getting decked by a punch from the irate pink-haired Kanoiki. Naruto, shouted Sakura angrily as Konohamaru had to cover his ears at her shrieking. Same time, just outside of Kumo. Scouting mission, questioned Naruto walking beside the pretty blonde Jinchuriki of the two-tailed monster cat, Yugito Ni. What's so special about this place? Yes, a scouting mission Naruto-kun. Just because I'm a Jinchuriki doesn't mean I don't have to go on scouting missions. I'm one of the best at it and I actually like scouting missions, said Yugito turning her head to look at her boyfriend. Plus this is the site where several of our shinobi have gone missing at. So Reikage sama wants me to check it out. Naruto groaned a little letting his shoulders slump. This is going to be boring, said Naruto before feeling a hand lay on his cheek. I know you were expecting to just have a great couple of days with me but don't worry, once this mission is up. I promise I'm all yours after when this is all over, said Yugito as Naruto perked up slightly. Yugito then deeply kissed the QB Jinchuriki, sending him blissfully to the ground once she released it. Now you just rest here and I'll be back in an hour or so. Yes ma'am, said Naruto with his eyes closed as Yugito turned around to continue walking. Hey, Yugi-chan. Yugito was about 20 feet from Naruto when she stopped hearing Naruto call for her. Yes Naruto-kun, said Yugito turning back around to see Naruto, now standing in front of her with a smile on his face. I love you, said Naruto, deeply kissing Yugito before moving his head back. Be careful. Yugito smiled back at Naruto, internally giddy at Naruto's words. I love you too, Naruto-kun, said Yugito as Naruto was now laying back down in the spot he was in before, 20 feet away from her. Yugito turned back around as she continued to go and begin her mission, happier this time. A little over an hour passed as Naruto sat up into a lotus position. Him, I wonder how strong my sensing ability is when using sage mode. Yugi-chan has got to be several miles away but I should still be able to reach her, especially considering she'll be walking back thought Naruto. 
That sage mode of yours might make it to her. But are you really going to use that power just to spy on your mate's chakra signature, said Kurama in Naruto's head. Naruto looked sheepish at being caught like that. You can't tell me that you wouldn't do the same. Questioned Naruto back to his partner. I'm a being of pure chakra, given form. I don't have the same weird thoughts as you if I do even have thoughts for that matter. Outside of your body, I'm considered to be just a rampaging beast that destroys everything in my path. So, I guess I wouldn't do the same as you. I might, I have no clue what to think if I do think at all. Damn, that's, that's dark. I think you have thoughts Kurama. Just because you're a chakra construct doesn't mean you don't have thoughts and all that. You're one of the wisest beings I know, person, animal, or chakra construct. There's no way you don't have thoughts, replied Naruto back to Kurama. I hope you're not believing what some shinobi said to you in the past. Forget him, your Kurama of the leaf and my partner, along with my oldest friend. Plus, I know you want to find out how strong this is anyway. You're right, I do. Fire that sage mode up, said Kurama with a grin at Naruto's words. And friend. PFFT, as if I'd want to be friends with you, wait am I thinking right now? Thought Kurama while Naruto smiled and nodded. Naruto then placed his hands on his knees before closing his eyes for a second. The trademark red markings of his sage mode began to appear on his face before he opened his eyes to reveal his golden sage eyes. Great, now to find Yugi-chan, said Naruto as he began to scan the surrounding area for his girlfriend. Maybe I'll surprise her when I find her. Continuing his scan of the area, Naruto couldn't locate Yugito's chakra signature. That's odd. You have to have covered this entire area. So where is she? Questioned Kurama as Naruto couldn't answer him. Well let's go find her then. You never know, maybe something bad happened. Naruto stood up before rocketing off the ground in a powerful leap. Naruto came down in the center of the town that Yugito was searching in. Upon landing, Naruto closed his eyes to focus more on his sensing ability. After a few seconds, Naruto panicked slightly when he felt Yugito's chakra signature nearly a mile away, surrounded by two other chakra signatures. Akatsuki travels in pairs, said Kurama as Naruto's eyes widened before he took off in a series of shunshuns to where he could feel Yugito's chakra. Naruto appeared outside of a sewer-like area, that was closed off due to a ton of rocks. Someone must have blocked off the exits in hopes of keeping the battle closed, said Naruto before creating an enormous Raisingen in his hand. Senpo, Odama Raisingen, Sage Art, Big Ball Raisingen, said Naruto before smashing the Raisingen into the side of the sewer, destroying an entire section of the sewer as he walked in with pieces of rocks falling on top of him. Who the fuck are you? Came the loud voice of a man with slick back silver hair. He carried a large triple-bladed scythe and had on a burned and singed Akatsuki cloak. You're ruining the ceremony I'm trying to accomplish here. Hidden, calm down. That's the QB Jinchuriki. Came the voice of another man, donning a perfectly conditioned Akatsuki cloak and mask. The mask obscured his entire face besides his eyes, which were green with red sclerae. He is not one to be trifled with. Naruto-kun, came the voice of Yugito, cloaked in her blue chakra shroud. I'm glad you came, said Yugito. Naruto performed a shunshun to appear beside Yugito as he checked her for injury. Are you okay? Questioned Naruto worried about Yugito. Of course I am. I've only been going against the guy with the silver hair, who is actually terrible at fighting. The other one decided not to attack though so I've just been beating down on this guy, said Yugito, internally happy that Naruto was so worried about her. But he won't die though. No matter how much I hurt him, he just shrugs it off and keeps coming. He even said that he was immortal. Immortal. As in he won't die. Questioned Naruto, intrigued by the immortal comment. Before Yugito could answer though, Hidden decided to answer for her. Yes, I'm immortal. That's what happens when you follow Jashin Sama, said Hidden placing his side over his shoulder as he looked at Naruto. Even you and your powers wouldn't be able to kill me. Is that so? Questioned Naruto as Kurama decided to add his own two cents. That guy must really have a death wish. Just because you're immortal doesn't mean you can't be blown to a bunch of tiny little pieces, said Kurama as Naruto internally nodded to Kurama. Hidden, leader Sama said that we are not to go against the QB Jinchuriki. While I also feel the same way about his true ability, it would be wiser to not attempt it in the event, he can actually kill you. 
I would love to see him try, Kakazu. I'd actually welcome it, forget the leader's warning. It's clear that whoever puts these teams together knows dynamics. That Deodara guy and Sasori guy seem to be opposites, as well as these two. One's a hot head and the other is calm and collected, said Kurama in Naruto's head. Yeah, he's smart in how many people are in his organization. Having a smaller number of people must make it easier to get stuff done while also minimizing failures. I wonder who this, leader, is that they speak of said Naruto in return to his bow as he placed a hand on the ground. Don't move Yugi-chan. Shit. Hidden, run, said Kakazu, taking off down the sewer as a pink substance began to cover the floor. Kuchios, Gamaguchi Shibari, summoning, toad mouth bind, thought Naruto, summoning the esophagus of a fire-breathing toad from Mount. Myoboku. Hidden and Kakazu continued to sprint down the sewer as the pink flesh continued to spread out all around them. What is this, Naruto-kun? Questioned Yugito as she had never seen anything like it before. It won't catch them at the speed they are moving at. We'll have to go and hunt them down, said Naruto before answering Yugito. And it's a summoning technique that brings forth the esophagus of a toad from Mount Myoboku. Anyway, we have to catch them. Naruto then took off in a sprint to chase down the Akatsuki members. Okay. We still don't know what the other guy can do so we need to be careful, said Yugito following after Naruto. After running for several minutes, Naruto realized that the Akatsuki members were long gone. How did they disappear so fast? That couldn't have been two minutes since they left and there's no way they could run that fast to get away from us, said Yugito noticing no trace of the Akatsuki members anywhere. I know. I was picking them up a second ago with my sensing ability and then poof, they disappeared, said Naruto wondering the same thing. It's like they were summoned or something. A few minutes of investigating later and Yugito decided to end Naruto's seeking. It's over Naruto-kun. They came and then they ran. I'm not hurt nor did they get to me. There's no need in trying to find them. As you said, they were summoned so there's nothing your sensing ability could do to find them, said Yugito. Plus this gives us the chance to start our time together. Naruto's sage mode began to fade as he smiled at Yugito's words. Yes, piggyback ride. Questioned Naruto before feeling the weight of his girlfriend land on his back and her head lay across his shoulder with her eyes closed. I'll take that as a yes. Sweet dreams, Yugi-chan. Halfway to Kumo, Naruto felt a finger poke his cheek. Turning his head in the direction of the poke, Naruto received a kiss on the lips from a now awake Yugito. What was that for? Questioned Naruto as Yugito smiled. You told me you loved me first, said Yugito with a small smirk on her face. Naruto's eyes widened in realization as Yugito's smirk seemed to widen with them. No, shouted Naruto as he continued to carry the beautiful Jinchuriki to Kumogaku. In a large tree several miles from Kumogaku. He tried to get us killed by attempting to face down the Jinchuriki, said Kakazu to the leader of the Akatsuki spectral image. I did allow him to face the Nibi Jinchuriki alone when we may have been able to capture her faster but even still, with the Kyubi Jinchuriki so close to her, it'll be difficult to get her and even more difficult to keep him from ruining the extraction of her bayou. I'd suggest taking the tailed beasts 3 to 8 before attempting to grab her. Kakazu, what the hell? How are you just going to, started hidden before being silenced by the authoritative voice of their leader. Quiet down hidden. You made the right decision, Kakazu. Luckily I gave you each a rod that allowed me to summon you out of the area, if not, you may have had to go against that boy, said Akatsuki's leader. We will also follow your suggestion of taking the Nibi last with the Kyubi. Conan and I will handle those too, you two worry about capturing the Gobi at this point. Dismissed. Once the two members of the Akatsuki were gone, a swirl appeared next to the leader. Out of that swell, a figure came stepping out. That boy is becoming a nuisance. But I knew this would happen considering his relationship with the Jinchuriki, said the figure as the leader nodded his head. Is that power you said you'd have for me ready yet? I'd like to get him out of the way now, said the leader before the figure shook his head. Almost. I'm working out all the details now but if this works, I believe you'll enjoy seven pairs of eyes on the battlefield rather than six, said the figure before the leader widened his eyes in shock. In due time. In due time. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.